Hello and welcome back to Hidden Gems. Hidden Gems is where we try to show you features and capabilities of the product that you may not be aware of, but we think you'll you'll really benefit from knowing. I'm really happy to bring you part two of Object Persistence, covering the binary object storage subsystem, otherwise known as BOSS. So we're actually going to show you how to create single user database-like capability by using BOSS. I want to emphasize that this will work in both Object Studio and VisualWorks. Uh, to recap from last time, Object Persistence about, is about saving and restoring the state of an object, and that can be done with relational and object databases, but we're showing some alternatives. So last time we showed text-based persistence, which has some neat advantages, and now we're showing uh, binary storage using BOSS. So we're going to show you the, some of the what, why, and how is what storing the objects in a binary format, why creating essentially a single user database, and how the binary object storage class. Some basics about BOSS. BOSS, other than just storing and, and retrieving, does some, some really powerful and capable things that you may not be aware of. For example, if you store a, a bunch of objects using BOSS and two different objects share another object, when you restore that, they are back to sharing that same object, not individual instances, which is what often happens with with uh, persistence. When you r restore it, you may not be sharing that same object again unless you specifically handle it. So BOSS handles that, which is can be really, really useful. Another thing is if you have an object that refers and then back around to itself, in a lot of systems that would create a circularity and you'd have you'd have a problem. Boss handles that. So it's really smart about how it does things and it can store almost anything. It stores a lot of different things. It's very flexible, very powerful, very capable pretty hard to stop. It, uh, it, it, it works very well. So we're going to demonstrate how to store a collection of objects using BOSS, pretty straightforward, and then how to store the objects discreetly. So let's start into that. We're going to use the example of our, of our stocks, which we've used in the past, and we're going to store them to stocks1.bos for BOSS. We create a binary storage on new, the file name write stream. We get a copy of the stocks. Why do we do a copy? Well, essentially, it's to remove any dependents. So if you have dependents that refer to an application, that re refers to uh, uh, Windows that you have, you don't want to be storing all of that. We're just trying to store the domain object here. So we don't want to end up sucking out your entire your entire image into the file that, that we don't want to do. So copy is one way to do that. Another thing I'm doing for this first example here is clearing data that I have in the stock, like all the, the pricing data, uh, earnings data, and financial information for that stock. So we're just, we're paring it down to the basics and we're going to take a look at that. So we, we, we prepare the stocks, removes dependencies, removes data we don't want to store, and then we say, boss, next put the stocks. This writes out the entire collection as one object, and then we can restore it. So here's how, how, how large it is. Stocks one is 368K. The next example we're going to show you here is storing them discreetly. Now, instead of one large object, essentially the whole collection, we're going to basically do the same thing, the same setup as before, but now we're going to tell for each stock, do, STK for stock, boss next put that stock, uh, that, that stock, and we iterate through that and then close the file. Oh, this is also an important thing we want to use here. As I've mentioned in the past, ensure. So if you run into an error or some bad things happen, make sure you close up the file and, and release those resources. 
So essentially, the the file is is slightly larger because we we uh, reduce some sharing there, but it is pretty close to the same size. Some of the advantages we'll, we'll see we can we can retrieve one at a time, and what we're going to use that for is we're going to create enumerators to access that file an enumerator right so say we want to have a select a, a standard enumerator in small talk but instead of going through a collection that's in memory we want that select to work on that file now why would we want to do that well this file might store really large objects that we can't bring into memory all at once or that we don't want to keep in memory for for long. So we can actually scan through a file and collect something. So what does that look like? It looks like this. The selected things, ordered collection new. File name, we're going to use uh, stocks2.boss, which we just looked at how we created that. We're going to do binary object storage on old this time because it's an existing boss file. Then boss at end while false, get the next stock. We get this one at a time. That's why we stored this discreetly. And then we're going to say a block value the stock. So that, that's going to execute the block that we passed it for whatever we're looking. And of course, if it's true, we'll add that to selected and then we'll close we will eventually at the end close things up then at the end we'll return all the selected so let's let's execute that i want to get every stock whose exchange is new york stock exchange and let's take a look at that boom so th that's going through the file that's actually going through the file let's let's look at one of these we can see in fact the exchange is new york stock exchange for for all our all the ones that met this criteria. So just like a collection in memory, and let's let's do another one for exchange over the counter. So we quickly, and, and you saw how quick that was. It just zipped right through that external file. So again, this is like a database where you, you maybe don't have room or don't want to store everything in-house, yet you still want some of the the great and powerful capabilities of using these enumerators. So let's do more. We don't have to do something simple like that. Let's find where we have the stock has tech somewhere in the name. And here, here we can see. Okay, technologies, technology, technologies, biotech. So anywhere where tech is in the name, we just we just scan through. So again, this is 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 really it keeps things it keeps your code small talk simple and small talk powerful but we're using is essentially an external an external resource essentially a, a an in-house a, a, a simple trivial type of database now likewise we can do detect here's what detect will look like we do the same setup only this time, once we find something, once we find if it's true, we're going to say that's the selected thing that we want. The stock is, is we found is the first thing we found. That's what detect does. And then we said boss to end. So we stop iterating through the file and say, I want to find the first one that meets this criteria. Well, we found it, the first one that has tech in the name, or we want a particular symbol. Boom, we found uh, JP Morgan Chase with the with the symbol JPM. Name industry. Oh, here's the symbol right here, JPM. That's what we're matching. Okay. The last thing I want to cover is how to use BOSS for random access to the data. Now, this is truly a database-like capability. What it means is I can have a, lo a large number of objects in a file, and I can go to the middle of that file and pluck an object out of the middle. And how do we do that? Well, 
First of all, I'm going to do another type of 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 save. I'm going to do stocks dot stocksix dot boss. I'm also going to store them discreetly. But as I write them, okay, here I'm doing the break dependence for all these all these stocks. <clears throat> And then what I'm going to do is create a stock index, which is an identity dictionary. Always use, when you can, new colon, so we don't waste time making a larger dictionary as you go through. And then here's basically the pattern. At the stock index, at the symbol, we're going to put the boss position. We're going to put the stock into boss. Then this is important for the way boss works with remembering all the all the shared things. So so this would be the one disadvantage, losing some of that shared 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 object sets that you get. We we need to forget about that, and then we say uh, next index, and this essentially creates an index for all the stocks. Let's take a look at this. I want to go to, okay, it tells me what position the stock with this symbol is. So American Airlines is at, at, at this point, uh, et, et cetera. So I have a position in the file for all those things. Then I'm going to do something else. I'm actually going to create another file, and I'm going to save my index. So let's take a look at what this all looks like. So here we can see this is a little larger. Oh, back up. One other thing I did was I created, to make this more realistic, I created a file. Instead of removing all the, the historical data and the earnings data and the financial data, I kept it in there. And so we got a 20 meg file. Then I created it with the index. We lose a little space because we're not sharing some of the same things. And this is 22 meg. And then I have the, the actual index into this file, which I store right here in, the, in this small file, which is a dictionary. And then I can read that back in and have the positioning into this file. Now, what does this give me the ability to do? <clears throat> well, I can do some of the same things before, like a detect with the index. So I can say uh, detect, find me the first stock with, with this symbol right here, and I'll just show you that indeed works. But the most, the most important thing is I can say stock add index. Let's take a look at this. We, we create access to our, our stocks ix.boss file right here, just as we did before. Then we say stock index at that symbol, that's the file position. Boss position to that file position, and then get the next object, and then close things up and return it. So this is essentially, we're going right out to the middle of that file. So here's, here's an example. Let me change this to at, Add index right here. And so if I do this, inspect this, and I, I just pluck that file right out of the, or pluck that object right out of the middle. <clears throat> if I want to go to the stock at the index, this is near the end of the file because I believe I stored them in, in, uh, in order. And this pulls this right, right from the end of the file. So just to see what, what the difference might be in, in, in running things. If we scan through the file with the detect, how long does that take to run? Well, let's let's print that. That takes 309 milliseconds to go through that. But if I go directly to the spot and pluck it out, that should be quicker. And in fact, it is. It's 12 milliseconds, far, far faster. Of course, if I'm doing a select and I want to get a bunch of things, the, the uh, a select and scanning through the file would be appropriate. But if I want to just reach into that file by a particular index and pull that object out, just as I would in a database, this is the ideal and very fast way to do this. So to recap, 
the what, why, and how of BOSS, storing things in a binary format, single user database. We do it with BOSS, and it handles a lot of those difficult things that if you were writing this from scratch, you would you would run into these issues and need to solve them. BOSS does that. BOSS is like a tank. It's hard to stop. There are some possibly slightly uh, faster ways if you want to write something very custom of, of handling this yourself. But BOSS is a great already built framework to do these things to get this really powerful database-like capability very simply and easily. So that's it for this time. I hope you enjoy this. If you have any comments, please send them to, to me, Arden Thomas, at athomas at synthcom.com. And that's if you want the code, any of this, have any questions, suggestions for future Hidden Gems pod, uh, screencasts, please let me know. Until next time, have a great time with Smalltalk. Thank you.